This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Uh, this is a lecture on Chapter 18 uh, for Paper P4 on Foreign Exchange Risk Management. Um, now, as I say, it's Chapter 18, which starts on page 97 of the course notes. Uh, and the first part of this chapter is very much revision of Paper F9. So, if you studied Paper F9, then uh, perhaps just quickly read through the chapter and um, revise it for yourself. If you didn't study F9 because you um, took the exams under the old syllabus, then of course you need to study this in more detail. However, uh, before I start talking about the nature of what, what we mean by foreign exchange risk and how we might deal with it, uh, first of all, make sure that you, you actually know how to apply exchange rates, so you can actually convert money. Now that may seem terribly obvious, but uh, different countries quote exchange rates in slightly different ways, uh, and it is important to be clear how we deal with it uh, for the way they're quoted in the exam. And so to show you what I mean, can you turn to page 98 of the course notes? And let me show you first of all with example 1. Example 1 says, A PLC receives $100,000 from a customer in the US, in America. And although it doesn't say here, uh, can you assume for all the examples in these notes, unless you're told differently, assume here that we are in the UK. And so A, A is in the UK, they're going to receive $100,000, uh, and they need to convert it, obviously, into pounds. And it says the exchange rate, it's quoted dollar pound, 1.6250 to 1.6310. Now, there are two things to make sure you're happy with. Uh, the first is that the way the exchange rates are quoted in the exam, that exchange rate of, let's say, ignore the spread for the moment, let's say 1.6, but always... Uh, whatever currencies he's quoting, it's saying that it's 1.6 of the first currency, which here is dollars, equals 1 of the second, which here is pounds. So again, forgetting the spread for the moment, I'll deal with the exact numbers in a second, but it means 1.62, 1.63, it means there are about 1.6 dollars equal to 1 of the second equals 1 pound. Now that's the first bit, and so of course here, uh, because we're receiving $100,000, to convert that to pounds, if $1.6 equals one pound, surely to convert to pounds we'll divide by approximately 1.6. So that's rule number one. Now it may seem obvious particularly if you're familiar with um, dollars, pounds, uh, but he could, it's unlikely, but he could use invented currencies when it's uh, clearly a lot less obvious, but always it's this many of the first currency is equal to one of the second. The second thing, of course, relates to the spread. I was saying here it's approximately $1.6 to the pound, uh, but we've got this spread, 1.6250 to 1.6310. And as I'm sure you're aware, uh, the reason we've got two rates, it depends on which way we're converting. Whether we're changing dollars to pounds or pounds to dollars, uh, the bank quotes two different rates. And the difference, of course, is the bank's profit. Now, it's vitally important, fairly obviously, to make sure when you're converting, you pick the correct one of the two rates. I mean, okay, it's a small point and it wouldn't fail you, but when we come shortly to risk, uh, whatever other problems there might be, you're always going to have to be converting currency, um, and it's awful, of course, to have gone wrong from the very beginning and been converting at the wrong rate. Uh, now, what's happening here? We're receiving uh, $100,000, 
The question is, will we divide by 1.62 or will we divide by 1.63? Now, how you remember this is up to you. Uh, it's whichever you find uh, efficient, easy, obvious, uh, and importantly quick. Uh, one way you can do it, of course, is it's whichever's worse for you. You know, it's the bank that makes the profit. And so given that we're going to receive money, uh, we know it's $100,000. We're going to divide by, or well, which of those two rates is worse for us, gives us the smaller receipt. Well, surely when you're dividing, divide by the bigger number gives the smaller answer. And the rate we'll use, in fact, is 1.6310. And before I say any more, let me convert 1.6310. Um, it converts to 6131, pounds. But it must be whichever's worse for you. If it's not already obvious, you try dividing by 1.6250 and you'll find you end up with a bigger pound receipt. Well, again, it can't be. It's the bank makes the profit, not us. Well, if you prefer to think it through that way, uh, by all means do. But nobody cares how you get the answer as long as you get it right. Uh, on the other hand, let me give you a rule. The rule is this that the two rates, they always quote the lower one first and the higher one second. The first one, the lower one, is the rate we use if we buy the first currency, in this case dollars. So if we, and by we I mean the company, if the company is buying dollars, we use 1.6250, whereas the second rate is the rate we use if we, the company, are selling, again, the first currency, dollars. Now, don't be confused about one thing. Some people get very upset and start thinking about the bank's buy-sell rates. The bank often refers to them as buy rates, sell rates. I'm not interested in the bank. Here, from the company's point of view, if the, in this example, if the company were buying dollars, we convert at 1.6250. If the company is selling dollars to the bank, we'll convert at 1.631. Well, of course, we're receiving dollars. And so to convert them, surely we'll sell dollars to the bank. And if we're selling dollars, well, the dollar sell rate... Um, we're selling the first currency, it's 1.631. Now, sorry going on a bit there, but it, it clearly is important uh, that if you get these wrong, uh, then the whole thing's going to go wrong. As I say, when we come on to risk, it all starts being um, becoming a bit silly. Now, there is another example in the notes, but before you do it, just do this for me. Suppose I give you, again, we're in the UK, uh, and I give you an exchange rate as follows. Pound, euro. And incidentally, I'm inventing a rate here. So obviously in the exam, you use his rates, whether it's realistic or it isn't. Suppose I say that the pound, euro exchange rate is 2.8412 to 2.9865. Again, we're in the UK. And suppose this time we need to pay, uh, beg your pardon, uh, pay 500,000 euros. We're in the UK, so we need the pound equivalent. Have a quick go yourself. Pause this recording. Have a quick go and check you can convert it. Well, let's do it. First of all, remember... Uh, forgetting the spread, it's about two of the first currency, pounds equals one of the second. So if one euro is 2.8, 2.9 pounds, sure to convert to pounds 500,000 euros, this time you'll multiply by the relevant exchange rate. 
Think again for a second. 2.8 pounds is 1 euro. 500,000 euros, or is that times 2 point? Uh, and we're on to the second bit of the problem. Which of the two rates are we going to choose? Well, again, if it's obvious, it's obvious. I don't, nobody cares how you get the answer. But using the rule I said, the lower, the first of the two, is the rate we use if we are buying the first currency, which is pounds. The second is the rate at which we sell the first quoted currency. Again, pounds. So what are we doing here? We're in the UK. We need to pay some euros. So we need to buy euros from the bank. In order to buy euros, we'll sell pounds. So we need to sell pounds. The uh, pound sell rate is 2.9865. And therefore, the 500,000 euros converts to, you better check my arithmetic, but I think, 149.3250. Is that right? Yes. To uh, what? 1.4 million. Okay, well, um, I've said three times now. How you decide which of the two rates is up to you, but make sure you've got it. If you think you're clear, have a go at example two uh, on page 98. If you're still unsure, look back slowly at the two examples I've just done. But otherwise, have a go at example two and check you've got it. All right, well, I'll assume you paused and did it yourself. But check. Here, I've deliberately used um, a fictitious currency, which I said is unlikely in the exam, but he just could, and it's normal rules. But Jim Jam is a company based in India. The currency is the Indian rupee. We owe money to a supplier in Ruritania. Uh, the currency is Ruritanian dollars, and we owe $240,000. Well, the exchange rate... Indian rupee to Ruritanian dollar uh, is 8.6380 to 9.2530. So again, remember that means there are 8 or 9 Indian rupees equals 1 Ruritanian dollar. 1 Ruritanian dollar equals 8 or 9 rupees. Well, we're in India, remember? So we deal in rupees, but we owe, what is it, $240,000? Well, check me. If one Ruritanian dollar is eight or nine rupees, we'll multiply by the relevant rate to get the rupee equivalent. Secondly, which of the two rates is it going to be? Well, remember, these are the buy and sell rates. We buy, we sell rupees. We're in India, and so to get the dollars, we need to buy Ruritanian dollars. And in order to buy them from the bank, we'll sell to the bank Indian rupees. So it's the Indian rupee sell rate, which is 9.2530. You should therefore have got nine point two five three zero two 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 zero seven two zero. Okay. Now I appreciate I've not said anything about exchange risk uh, as of yet. I just wanted to make sure we were all happy there. Uh, I'll stop this lecture here. Uh, the next lecture, uh, we'll chat about what we mean by exchange risk and the ways in which we might deal with it.